This is the ROG Zephyrus G14 GA403U with AMD, one of the latest 2024 gaming laptops which I'll be reviewing today. It's a 14 inch laptop with a pretty impressive spec, so we'll see if this could be the perfect laptop for all your gaming and productivity needs. Details are in the description below including purchasing links. So let's jump right in and take a look at what you get inside the packaging and if you have any questions drop them in the comment section below. In the packaging you get a box containing accessories which has a smaller 100 watt AC power adapter with a type C connector and a larger 180 watt power adapter with a proprietary connector. There's two power cables with a clover leaf connector and a black box containing the laptop and underneath that there's some documentation. Taking a closer look at the laptop it has an aluminium alloy casing all the way around feeling quite premium. The one I have has the eclipse grey finish but there's also a platinum white finish. You've got the ROG logo in the corner and there's a new slash light on the lid which is configurable in the Armory Crate software which you can even set to provide application notifications when the lid is closed. It's easy to open with one finger plus it has a nice smooth motion opening and closing with a strong hinge going back 135 degrees. The keyboard is a good size with speaker grills at the sides but it doesn't have a number pad. The keys feel nice and soft with a clicky sound with them having a travel of 1.7 millimeters. The keys are backlit which can be changed to cycle through three different effects by pressing down on function and F4. The aluminium alloy casing interior is smooth and sturdy and only has a little flex when pressing down hard on the keys. At the back of the laptop you've got Zephyrus written together with three LED indicators. Looking at the side profile you can see it has a consistent thickness from the front to the back and underneath you have your vents and rubber feet at the front and back with the back one being slightly thicker to give you a bit more of an incline keeping it nice and stable on a flat surface. Spec wise it has an AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS processor which is AI ready and capable of handling AI tasks offline. There's 32 gigs of LPDDR5X6400 RAM, a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD, there's two graphics cards so an integrated Radeon 780M and an Nvidia GeForce RTX 4070 GPU that has 8 gigs of memory with a MUX switch and Nvidia Advanced Optimus allowing you to switch graphics cards depending on your performance needs. The screen has an OLED panel which is 14 inches with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio so 2880 by 1800 and it has a 1080p full HD IR camera. I've added the dimensions on the screen and it weighs about 1.5 kilos feeling light and compact. On the sides you have your ports so looking on the left you've got a power input a HDMI 2.1 port that supports 4K at 120Hz with G-Sync, a Type-C port which is USB 4 supporting DisplayPort and power delivery, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and a 3.5mm combo audio jack. On the right side there's a micro SD card reader and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and another Type-C port which is a USB 3.2 Gen 2. Both the Type-C ports offer DisplayPort 1.4 support so you can connect an external monitor to either but the left Thunderbolt USB 4 port always connects to the Radeon integrated graphics and the other Type-C port connects to the Nvidia graphics card regardless of the GPU mode selected and the HDMI always connects directly to the Nvidia graphics card. There's no Ethernet port but it does support Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. It doesn't have a fingerprint reader for unlocking but you can use Windows Hello to unlock using facial recognition with this spec coming in at just under £2,400 but there are other configurations in the G14 range so check the link in the description below for other specs and prices. Upgrade wise the memory is soldered on and there's no additional slots for upgrade but you have the ability of upgrading the M.2 SSD but no additional slots. The OLED display has a glossy panel with it being the first 3K OLED display for ROG gaming laptops with the bezels around the screen being pretty thin. It has a 10 bit depth supporting 120 hertz refresh rate and a 100% DCI-P3 with an sRGB of 100% and a contrast ratio of 1 million to 1. The colors and contrast levels are vibrant and sharp looking absolutely stunning on the glossy screen so ideal for creative work like video editing or Photoshop. 
brightness levels are good at 500 nits with it having a VESA HDR True Black 500 certification and Dolby Vision. But looking in Windows Advanced Display Settings, it was reporting 616 nits. Plus with it having a glossy screen, you will see some reflections in a bright room, which is no surprise, but viewing angle wise, it's excellent from all sides with just a minimal reduction in quality when viewing from an angle. But as it's an OLED display, there's no light bleed with it giving stunning inky blacks. The laptop comes with Windows 11 Home and has ASUS's Armory Crate software, allowing you to easily change CPU and GPU settings. On the GPU, there's Ultimate Standard Eco Mode and Optimize Modes. And on the CPU, there's Windows Silent Performance Turbo and Manual, where you can customize your own profile for the CPU and GPU. Adjustments here affect performance on both the CPU and GPU, which in turn will impact noise levels as the fan levels increase to keep the laptop cool. Changing the CPU mode is pretty quick, and convenient with no reboot required. But with the GPU, if you change mode to ultimate, you'd have to reboot for the change to come into effect. On startup, by default, the laptop plays a boot up sound, which you can turn off in the Armory Crate software or via the BIOS. Testing the laptop with some gaming and performance wise, it's really good with the AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS CPU, which has a 24 meg cache, eight cores and 16 threads with a base clock of four gigahertz and a boost clock of 5.2 gigahertz. The Nvidia GeForce RTX 4070 GPU has eight gigs, capable of providing a 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen. I've played a number of different games with the in-game graphics set to the highest value and it performed really well, with it being ultra smooth as it supports G-Sync. Noise level wise, to give some examples, so with the CPU on turbo and GPU on ultimate, it was pretty loud with the sound levels around 50 decibels and then taking it down and setting the CPU on silent and the GPU on eco mode, it's around 45 decibels when gaming and between 40 to 42 decibels during productivity. But just to note, these sound test values also take into account ambient noise levels in the room. To give some examples of FPSs when playing on the highest graphic settings, with the CPU on turbo and GPU on ultimate. On Fortnite, I was getting a 70 FPS. On Apex, it was around 105 FPS. On GTA 5, I was seeing about 110 FPS. Forza Motorsport, I was getting around 55 FPS. And on Far Cry 6, I saw around 75 FPS. Obviously, this is with the graphics set pretty high in game. And reducing this down, you'll see much higher FPS values. Now, in terms of response time, the OLED screen is lightning fast with a 0. 0.2 millisecond response time, making it perfect for gaming, and it has a built in HDMI 2.1 port so you could even connect the laptop to an external screen to enhance the gaming experience even further. So here I've connected it to my LG OLED G3 via the inbuilt HDMI 2.1 port with HDR turned on. I can get 4K at 120Hz with a 10-bit depth and Windows was reporting a peak brightness of 1499 nits. The picture quality is absolutely stunning, giving an excellent experience and on Fortnite I was getting about 70 FPS on max settings in game together with a CPU and GPU being on max. Even switching over and connecting it up directly to my sim cockpit. This is from Next Level Racing and is the GT Elite and monitor wise it has a 45 inch LG Ultra Gear 45 GR95QE attached together with my wheel being the Logitech G Pro wheel and pedals. It coped perfectly with Formula 1 2023 again with graphics on high and CPU and GPU on max, I was getting about 50 FPS, giving a great racing experience, with the racing experience being smooth and responsive, making it perfect for all your gaming needs due to the power it has. And just to note, at max performance, the cooling did a great job in keeping the laptop cool, but it was noisy. I performed a benchmark test on the CPU using Cinebench R23 and results were quite positive with the single core CPU test coming in at the top and the multi-core test coming in at number four in the rankings, so quite impressive. On to general usage, the keyboard is nice and comfortable to work from with ample space on the laptop for your wrists with its large oversized trackpad. The backlight keyboard is good to work from, especially if you're using it in the evening. You can control the brightness levels as there's three levels of brightness and you're able to turn it off too. But worth mentioning, there were some points where the writing is smaller and you'll notice there is some inconsistency in brightness levels there. The built-in webcam doesn't have a privacy cover, but you do see a light come on 
on to indicate the webcam is active. It has a 1080p resolution with the quality being generally good. Text clarity is excellent when working on documents and the screen was perfect for creative work using Adobe Premiere Pro and Photoshop with it having a PPI of 242. And no surprise, streaming on here with Netflix or YouTube worked perfectly fine with the screen being more than adequate to give a great viewing experience. Battery life wise, panel power saver is enabled by default, which automatically lowers the screen's refresh rate to 60 hertz when you unplug the charger and you'll notice the screen flashes black briefly as the refresh rate changes and goes to 120 hertz when you plug the power in. Battery life was pretty impressive with it lasting around 10 to 11 hours in a YouTube video playback test and around two hours while gaming. There's four speakers with dual force woofers and two tweeters that are front and rear facing supporting Dolby Atmos. And seriously, for the small form factor, they sound really good, providing clear sound with some depth and with no distortion at higher levels. Have a listen to this. It's probably the best speakers I've heard on a laptop, but I wouldn't say they'd replace having a good headset. And speaking of headphones, this has a high res certification when used with headphones. There's also a built-in three microphone array and my voice that you're currently hearing is the quality to expect from it, with me talking about 40 centimeters away from the mic. It also features AI noise cancelling technology. So with me typing, this is what to expect from the microphone in terms of quality. So in summary, the ROG Zephyrus G14 GA403U is an awesome, impressive laptop, powerful and portable to cover both your gaming and productivity needs with ease, whether you're at home or on the go, making it the perfect choice. If you're after an all-round laptop, with it being nice and compact, weighing just 1.5 kilograms, with a great build quality that's strong and sturdy. The picture quality on the screen is absolutely stunning, with excellent colour and contrast levels, with really inky blacks looking amazing with the picture quality being very sharp and helped with it having a glossy display and it even has a HDMI 2.1 port that's capable of outputting 4k at 120 hertz with ease. At maximum performance the cooling did a great job in keeping the laptop cool to provide an excellent gaming experience. Negatives wise it's a tough one as seriously this is an awesome laptop and if I was really nitpicking I'd say as the RAM is soldered on there's no ability to upgrade. With the laptop on max settings it was quite noisy which is no surprise and it would have been nice if it had an ethernet port but none of these i'd say are a deal breaker in any way so there you have it you've come to the end of another video and i hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this details are in the description below including purchasing links and if you have any questions then let me know in the comments below for those of you who've got to the end of this video please leave a comment with rog g14 as it's nice to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it you can follow me on my socials don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.